All right, I think we're uh, about ready to go. So uh, my name is Daniel Goldstein. I lead the product management team here at Eureka. I'm really excited to share with you kind of the new things that we got out in the Ohm release that came out about a week ago. Um, and Gary, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gary Stom. I am a product manager here of Industry Solutions. I'm super excited to show some of the new extension packs and industry solutions that we will be releasing at home. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, and um, happy Groundhog's Day to everyone here. Uh, Gary here is from Pennsylvania, and I learned that people from Pennsylvania take it pretty seriously. Um, so we're happy to be celebrating that with you guys all here today. So let's jump in. The Ohm, um, this last release that came out, is um, a big one for us. It's extremely important. Um, and our main focus here was trust. Um, and trust encompasses in a lot of it. It's making sure that our customers and that the end users, mobile workers, trust the app for their day-to-day -day work, uh, that they trust that when they input data, it will securely get stored and saved and back to where it needs to go and that every aspect of the app will work the way you want it to and expect it to. Um, and part of this trust initiative has actually been a long um, project and it's releasing the new version of Eureka's mobile app, which we'll talk about. We basically rebuilt this from the ground up uh, with all the latest technology um, and everything, you know, the greatest and best and latest in there. Part of that is improving syncing. And it turns out the syncing in itself seemed to be a big issue for a lot of end users or something that uh, a lot of mobile workers and field workers would call iPad issues where they couldn't identify what was going wrong, but something wasn't syncing. And sometimes it's just them not knowing what's going on and sometimes there are actual problems. So this is an area we spent a lot of time in improving in the new mobile app. Uh, enhanced 3D models. So having 3D models and assets and, and images that you can play with and turn around right inside your forms as you get work done. Um, and continuing to enhance the capabilities of our Windows offline solution, allowing you to generate and create forms on the go. Uh, and Gary and all the work him and, uh, and his team have put in building new templates and capabilities, allowing people to get ready, get going quicker um, with out of the box templates ready to go. And a version control extension pack allowing you to manage the different versions of uh, form templates that you might have going out there. So that is the highlight. Those are the things we're going to touch on. Um, and let's jump right in. So uh, why did we spend all this time rebuilding Eureka's app? Uh, I would say the first and quickest answer is it's been around for a while and we had a lot of rework to do. Um, on it. Things have advanced in mobile technologies a lot since we first launched the Eureka app in 2016. Um, it's been a great app. It served thousands, I think about tens of thousands of end users, um, and it's time to, to revamp it. So we rebuilt, like I said, from the ground up, leveraging React.js, one of the newer technologies, which in itself has led to a much more responsive, faster app, um, improving the end user's experience. A part of the work we've done here is also to keep in mind um, adoption of it. And we know how hard it is rolling out a new app and changing technologies for field workers or end users. We wanted to make the, to make it easier, more seamless, make them want to use the app. Um, and we'll touch on some of the syncing improvements there. Uh, because we were able to rebuild this and start from the ground up, leveraging today's plugins and mobile technology, we can adapt and adopt uh, higher security standards as they come in, basically future-proofing that us for that. And this new framework and technology will allow us to roll out features, uh, new features quickly. Some things that we couldn't have done because of the where the current app is, um, and some things we just had to rewrite uh, from the beginning. So a lot of stuff in there, um, and all our new development and features will be in the new app only going ahead. So to kind of highlight where we're at, the current app, this is the blue app. These are screenshots from the, uh, the Apple App Store in Google Play, it looks very similar, is the app that probably everyone on this call, if, they're, if you're using Eureka, your users are on today. This is the new app. The white one says Eureka new, and it even has a little disclaimer in the description. So if your users go to install it, you just let them know that this is a new one. 
So one thing, um, one step you need to take to use the new one is first of all, upgrade in your Salesforce instance to the Ohm managed package of Eureka or higher as it comes. Uh, it will only support Ohm and higher. We will continue to support the Eureka mobile app, the blue app through the middle of this year um, and for any bug or major bug fixes needed. But all new development is in the new app. And we really wanna recommend our customers to start migrating over to it. And we will be posting and sharing more communications and recommendations about how to go through this process. Um, in the end, there is gonna be, and there is already so much more capabilities and functionality in the new app that it is definitely worthwhile. Sync improvements. We want to get uh, our mobile workers working as quick as possible. Um, and we spent a lot of time reworking this and rebuilding that technology. Uh, from our initial tests and benchmarking, when users um, are trying to prepare their work for offline, we've seen up to at least 25% faster in preparing all your data and downloading all the needed data for offline work. Um, also, when initially logging in and prepping the app or logging and setting the app up, we've seen up to 20% faster. These are significant improvements, even if this is just a second or you know half a second, but the feeling of that to an end user is significant. Um, I really encourage everyone on the call to give it, give it um, a test yourself, play around with it, see what we've done there. Um, we've also changed some of the sync mechanism to focus on getting the data you need now to do the work. Instead of doing a big, um, I'd say prep and kind of looking for all the data needed, focus on what you're needing now to get work done quicker. And part of this deals with how deep linking works. And we've heard um, complaints, and we've seen from customers how sometimes when deep linking it can take longer than you'd expect. Um, so we've changed that and reworked some of that um, functionality here. Um, in the end, what this allows you to do is get more data to your app and back to Salesforce quicker than ever before. So um, downloading more forums, bigger forums, and uploading pictures and lots of pictures, all of these things will work quicker. Um, and one of the biggest improvements, uh, which end users and mobile workers will see, are, um, are, are is the user experience here. A lot of times having in our previous app or current app that users are using today, we have a spinner. When we're syncing, the spinner just is, is circling and um, showing a little information what's going on. For some users, that can be a little frustrating, not knowing what's going on. And so one of our biggest enhancements here is a sync, um, sorry, a progress bar, letting users know what we're syncing and giving them an idea that um, of how much is left and tracking the progress. Um, this in itself can provide, a, uh, in, in our experience and research, a lot better experience. On the data management screen, and we'll show some of this in a demo shortly, we provide a lot more detail about what data is being synced, how long it could take, when was the last time you synced, and when to do each one of the different kinds of either syncing data or prepping for offline. Um, so a lot of new capabilities in there, which we're really hoping will improve mobile workers' experience. As part of our vision at Eureka to allow um, working with Eureka on any platform, um, we currently support uh, iOS and Apple devices and Android devices, but we also support Windows, leveraging a partner called Pulsar. Um, we launched this earlier or earlier last year and um, now have added the capability to generate forms on the go, allowing workers who use Windows devices to work fully offline with the capabilities of Eureka, generating and creating whatever forms needed, completing them and uploading that data back to Salesforce. Um, so take a look at that. If you are using Windows, um, please reach out. And it's all on our site, but more detail to come. Um, enhanced 3D models. So enabling our field workers to have those 3D models integrated into their forms right there. So they can see it, they can touch it, they can spin it around, they can zoom in, they can get cues and instructions and tags right on these 3D assets of what to do, helping enhance the end user and the mobile workers experience and helping them get job done quicker. Um, and um, this is integration through 3Kit, um, one of the leading technology partners on sales in the Salesforce ecosystem for 3D models. Um, and this can be embedded directly in any form in Eureka. 
This will be released in upcoming patch in a few weeks. Um, and with that, um, I did actually one housekeeping uh, item, which I forgot to mention before, is that feel free to add questions in the Q&A, and we will either answer them live while we're, we're talking here, um, or we will answer them at the end and have some more time for Q&A. So please feel free to drop in those questions. Now I will give a quick demo of the new mobile app. All right. What I really wanna show here and highlight is um, first of all, the difference between them. You see, we have the current Eureka, the blue app, um, and then Eureka new is the white app. And we really try to make a difference there and highlight that for end users. When opening up, you'll notice a new and refreshed user experience um, and user interface to log into Salesforce um, with all the latest security uh, requirements and capabilities. Here you'll see the progress bar. This is doing the initial setup and sync, which I mentioned, which we found to be 20% faster. Again here, and we went by that pretty quickly, um, is it will go in and ask for your device's biometric. So that's if that's a touch ID, face ID, or pin code, it will leverage that um, with the capability to disable that if that's not something that your organization requires as far as security. When logging in, we see right away a list of all of my work um, and are ready to go. But here I wanna jump in and show that new user uh, experience for the data management screen. You'll see there's two buttons here for prep, for, uh, prepare for offline. And the other one is sync. Preparing for offline is when we have a lot of other data besides forms that we need in order to do our work when we're offline, like accounts or additional work orders or related records. Here's where we can prepare for that. And when you see clicking that button, we'll begin the download of all that data and track the progress. For some users we've seen when downloading lots of records and talking about tens of thousands, if not more, this can take a long time. And so having that progress bar will help users understand how much is left ensuring that it didn't get stuck at any point. Um, the sync is for kind of bringing down the latest transactional data around forms or whatever is in our work orders or mobile cards. Here, I can jump into the work order, um, the job that I have as a field worker. I can see all the forms related to that work and then jump in and begin my work. And I'm gonna go into the asset inspection and maintenance and load the form here. All of the traditional and great capabilities of Eureka around conditional visibility and complex conditional visibility, tracking each step of the way and ensuring compliance to whatever safety requirements uh, needed before beginning the work is all still here. Capturing, G as I capture the geolocation um, and report on any other issues, this really guides my path in the form and uh, requires me to capture certain data that might be needed related to that error or whatever it is that I'm encountering. Um, here is where we're providing just images at the moment, um, but 3D models are going to be uh, incorporated here too in, in that upcoming patch, like I said. Here I can capture any pictures um, or upload pictures. And just a minor thing here, but this, this is actually has been a big request from customers, is the capability to multi-select images in one go and upload, uh, you know, seven, eight, instead of having to click each time to click into the image. This is something that the new app now supports um, from the get-go. Continuing my process, I can use smart lookups, which again guides me down a, um, a procedure. And based on the selection in the previous checklist uh, or pick list, will guide my options further down. So this is an existing capability of Eureka still here. Um, and still extremely important for many customers as they capture data in the field. Continuing the work, um, I'm provided with more information as I make my selections, I scan the barcodes needed and make you know the right validations there and continue down my path of completing the work and ensure I've captured the data um, complex formula. So behind the scenes here, 
based on the temperature that I've, ca that I've captured, we'll do calculations and give estimates of what the, um, what the temperature should be. Once I've validated everything is okay at this part, I can move ahead um, and use my lookups to choose whatever product it is I need. And here, capabilities we've released in the past, but continue to support and even enhance our um, more smart lookups and enhanced lookups. So I can filter the product based on the price book or based on any other criteria. So if it's maybe um, I only wanna search for certain accounts based on the type of account or assets based on the asset type, you can filter those out here in the search. As we complete the work, um, we'll capture any signatures or data from the customer needed and, um, and can close out the work and continue on with whatever we have next. And as we jump back, we'll see this is updated in my list of forms and can go back to the work orders or whatever, you know, the next step I have in my day. From here, I want to jump over quickly to Salesforce Field Service Mobile and just show a quick demo of Deep Link and how um, we've enhanced and improved it. So if you are using Salesforce Field Service, you'll know this screen. You can see your work orders here. Um, and as you begin work, if you need to complete a form, you can jump over directly through a deep link into Eureka. And in this example, I've actually killed the app, I've shut down the Eureka app, just to show how quickly it will launch and get you ready to work. So in this instance, what I was showing was in the work order and Salesforce Service Mobile, while the Eureka app is closed, click a button, it launches Eureka, it validates your biometrics with the face ID in this case on an iPad, and directly gets you into that work order, allowing you to get into the form very quickly um, and begin your work. So that was a quick demo of the new app. Again, all ready and to go out there on, the, on Google Play and the Apple App Store. Uh, feel free to, to play with it. We highly recommend uh, testing it out uh, and going through you know, everything that your, your workflows that you're using today before rolling this out to other users. Um, any feedback is highly appreciated. If you have input feedback about things you like, you don't like in the new app, please let us know. With that, I'll hand it over to Gary. Hey, thanks so much, Daniel. Really impressive how quickly when you were able to kill the Eureka app, when you went from Salesforce Field Service, deep linked into Eureka, and it had automatically loaded the form with all the data. That was super impressive. So good stuff there. Really appreciate it. Um, also want to mention, you know, even I know you were mentioned that I was from Pennsylvania and that we're super passionate about Groundhog's Day. I just want to apologize, even though we're looking at another six weeks of winter from our favorite rodent weatherman. Uh, I'm excited about these accelerators. I really think they're going to spring us ahead into some better weather sooner rather than later. Anyway, all, uh, with all those puns aside, um, just super excited to chat about some of these new accelerators and extension packs. And these are all about speed to value. Now, I'm super excited to introduce our new CPG and retail accelerator included in it is 15 templates. So you can simply drag and drop a template that's already pre-built directly into Eureka and it could have up to hundreds of questions. So you're not left dragging and dropping to create these templates as you're offering solutions. Um, it'll get you, it'll save you hours upon hours of time to stand up those, those production quality products uh, as quickly as possible. So included in this CPG and retail accelerator, we've got franchise audits, retail checklists, mer merchandising inspections, you name it, uh, and then a dozen of other templates there. And for those of you that aren't in the CPG or retail industry, do want to mention that we do have some additional templates that I hope will resonate well with you and the team. But what we're looking at down below there is a brand new sales repository. So if, if any part of your organization is using Sales Cloud, um, so I'm hoping that, that this will resonate with most people that are on our call today. But those that are using Sales Cloud, you can layer on Eureka on top of any of those use cases as well. So if uh, your sales team, they're using any sort of uh, lead qualifications or close plans or sales procedures, uh, Eureka is a great way to leverage that and, 
in other places in your, your uh, Salesforce environment. So just want to mention there that uh, um, you can get even more out of your investment in Eureka by layering in all additional use cases with other, other teams and other, other places of, of Salesforce. Um, but that's not it with all of our template additions. So Daniel, if you flip to the next slide, one of our extension packs that really helps you accelerate the production quality solutions and helps you get to that production quality solution faster is our new versioning template uh, accelerator. And what this does is it allows you to start to, to track changes for questions and create families of relationships of those form templates. See if there's any outstanding forms for inactive templates so you can take some action on it. Um, and even update some of those buttons from your mobile solutions or your desktop buttons that are referencing some of those old dated inactive templates. This is a great way to clean those up, polish it up so that your users are using the latest and greatest that you've pushed to production. Um, but all that said, let me steal screen share here and I wanna walk through where you can start to get some of these templates from our repository, as well as I'll give you a quick demonstration of that, that version control accelerator that we've produced. All right, fantastic. So I've begun to share my screen here, and I want to start by showing you directly from our website, eureka.io, under resources, you can find all of our accelerators. Now here, we've chatted about some of these different industry solutions that we've made available in the past. And so if you're interested in energy and utilities, manufacturing, HLS, construction, there's a whole host of these templates here on the left-hand side. You can click to any of these portions, and it'll take you directly to that section. And you can see all of these different templates that are available for you to download. You can download these, and like we mentioned in the past, drag and drop and put those directly into your Eureka app, uh, and it'll stand up all those questions um, and, uh, and chock full of images as well, so you can put content blocks that are relative to that solution that you're looking to build out. Uh, our most recent one here, again, of course, is our CPG and our sales repository. If you're curious about what might go into each of these or what one of these templates really looks like, you can click into our detailed guide, and this is from our support website here, and it'll show you each and every one of those websites with a recorded video, recorded GIF here, so you can see some of the feature and functionality and what the, the template is really looking to achieve. All that said, let me take you to our version control. So once you've got that great template inside of your environment, you've deployed it to users, inevitably you're gonna have to make a revision to that template. You might wanna change a question, you might wanna add questions and so on. So this is a great way that you can start to track those changes and manage those changes and revert back to other revisions and see how things were related to one another in case that you do need to make a change down the road. So I'm gonna pop into my Salesforce instance here. What we're looking at is a form template. For those of you that are offering templates, you're familiar with this screen. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, this is a simple form template inside of Salesforce. And what I'm gonna do, um, we're gonna create a new version here. So out of the box, you can copy for a new version, but what's going to happen is a lot of automation is gonna happen in the background. So that was version three of a template. You'll see that in the background before the page even loads, it starts to rename the template for me. Now you can name this further. What's beautiful about this solution is that it's all built with Salesforce automation. So if you wanna take a look under the hood, you can change these flows, you can add new fields, you can change the naming scheme or the, the version numbering, however you wanna do that. It's all available to you. You have the keys to the kingdom there, uh, all just simply because it is native Salesforce and we're using that automation in the background. So we're, we're creating a, a relationship here between this and the prior version and then adding a new version here. Um, you can start to go in and modify your template. When you've had an opportunity to polish it up, you can start to see how that template relates to some of the other uh, templates that were available. So here we can see all the different revs that we've created. You might have parent-child relationships. You might have sibling relationships. You can also start to see any of the forms that were inactive, excuse me, any of those forms that are outstanding for inactive form templates. Um, and also tag a start and end date. So you really have a life cycle of your forms throughout that process. Taking it a step further, you might be interested in where uh, questions are changing over time. So on this questions tab here, you can start to see the versions of each of your questions as well. So you can see which questions were added over each new version and when they had changed over time. So if you wanted to click into this specific question, you can even see how that question compares across all of your form templates for where it's being used. Now, uh, this might be tough to follow in a quick brief demonstration, so happy to, to share some additional documentation afterward, but here we're showing every single time that this question is used, 
And we can see that the uh, text, the label of the question had changed. Although a very simple uh, example here where we're adding some possession and customer's name. Customers, they can be so possessive, can't they? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you can see that we're tracking every individual text change that takes place from one record to the next. Uh, and we're checking boxes here so you can simply report off of all the times that that question had changed. Um, and you can see the, the, the numbers, the revision numbers there over time. And that also happens for changing the field types. If you have a pick list value and you open it up to a text value, we'll track that for you as a change as well. And then finally, I wanna just emphasize, we won't walk through the whole screen flow here, but what this section is doing, it's allowing you to identify if you have any uh, buttons, any Eureka mobile buttons or any desktop uh, Salesforce buttons, links, or actions that are using the old form template version. Now, why you might not want that is because uh, users, you want them to be using the most recent version. So you can walk through this flow. It'll take your button syntax and update the record ID so that your users are using the latest and greatest to get that best experience. Again, just walk through uh, quite a bit, a ton of new templates that we've introduced and this new way to manage your templates as you're producing new revs of those templates. Um, and uh, we've got a ton of documentation that we'll send to you via email. Uh, it'll also be available on our support site, opening up uh, the Q&A as well. Please let us know if you have any additional questions here. We'll take a moment here to answer any of those questions. Wow, Gary, how do I get that? How do I get my hands on that version uh, extension pack? Let me put it in the, the uh, chat for us, but it is directly off of our, our website. Um, so where we had mentioned a moment ago where uh, all of our accelerators live. So you can install any of those individual templates or the entire package itself. And I'll grab that package and I'll pop it into the chat for us. That's great. Uh, I'll look through, I think um, Jen here, who a lot of you know very well, has a uh, been extremely fast at answering questions. Um, maybe I'll call out a thing or two that came up. Um, we do have, so one of our key documents in our knowledge base is uh, this guide to Eureka's new mobile. I'd recommend, if I can share it in the chat too. I'd recommend, um, maybe I can to everyone. Uh, starting there, this is kind of a, a comprehensive document of everything about the new mobile. Um, I think uh, Gary, you need to share it to everyone, the link you sent. So Gary will put his link in there for the, the template version, the link I sent. Um, please take a look at that, read that through. It's not too long, but it provides all the detail that you need to know about starting to adopt the new mobile, some changes. There's something you need to change in the deep link. The base URL needs to be changed so to work with the new app. Um, but as far as setup, it's very, uh, besides a very limited, just upgrade your, your Salesforce instance to Ohm. Um, so that was a question about deep linking. Um, all your existing forms um, will continue to work in the new app. Um, so, so there's nothing you need to change in your forms. The only thing I'd recommend is, is testing them out. Make sure to test this in a sandbox, run through your flows. Sometimes there's things in backend flows. Sometimes there's things that, that have been done in templates, which we're not aware of, or we didn't know. And so you might encounter an issue. There shouldn't be. If you do, that's what I'm saying, test end to end your templates, your forms, your flows, um, and let us know. You know we'll, we'll get on it very quickly to fix that um, if anything comes up. Um, us, uh, for the 3D uh, models, that is integration with 3Kit. Um, we have details about this on our website. So you do you need to have a, um, a license subscription with 3Kit. Once you have that, you can pull those models right into Eureka's forms um, and put them basically anywhere, conditional visibility and the form logic all is supported there. Um, it, this will be coming out in an upcoming patch, which should be early March. So just stay tuned for that. Um, and that will be ready to go. Um, there was a question about form size. So, so we have made some, some enhancements around that. There is a new public setting in our documentation to control that. Um, we'd say this is not, you, you can test and play around with that. And there's some articles around that. We'd say we can, as long as we're supporting the current app, the blue app that people are using today, we can't 
go and make big changes to that because we need to continue to support obviously our customers and users on, on the current app and on the new app. I would say in the future, we have a few more steps to take. We will um, hopefully be able to increase the form size, but you are open. You know, there's some room to test that yourselves. Um, I think those are the main questions. And anything else, Gary, you're seeing that I might be missing or? That's it. Thank you, Jen, for answering a lot of those questions on the fly. That is great. So with that, I think we, um, we, we can wrap up. I really thank you all for joining us. Um, and as we, we, we released OM and celebrating the new mobile app, there is a lot there, a lot of new things, um, a lot of new capabilities. Um, please try out the new app. Please let us know. We really want your feedback about you know what, what you like, what you don't like, what we can keep on improving. And there's a lot more to come. I'd say 2023 is a very exciting year for Eureka. We took that step of rebuilding an app, which enables us to build so much more. So all of these other requests that people um, and customers and users need, we had to stop, rebuild the app and to, to allow us to move forward. So a lot more to come. So stay tuned um, and have a good day.